to grab something else here. Okay, I am, oh, sorry, sweet, sorry. I am going to, I had to start this a little early just because, here, um, we have a new puppy for those of you. I don't know if anybody is here yet. I don't think anybody's here yet, but um, we have a new puppy. And so I'm trying to, we're trying to get into a schedule with each other. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out, um, so I'm just starting a little bit early because she is content. And so, um, I just kind of wanted to start while she is content. So I am going to talk about, I just found, I didn't just find this. This has been, I've had this for a couple of months, this dresser. It's been waiting for me to make it over. And so I thought I would do some lives inside the frugal DIY and decor group here and kind of share my process and uh, how I flip furniture and what to look for how to clean it, um, how to prep it. Um, there is some missing veneer here, so I'm going to patch that and, uh, and just kind of talk about some of the things I do. I'm not gonna get the whole thing done today, obviously, when you're patching veneer, this has to dry for like overnight um, for a day. You wanna make sure that it's completely dry before you put paint or primer or anything on there, but I'm gonna kind of walk through some of the things that I use, what I look for when I'm looking for pieces to flip, um, and just kind of go through the process with you all. So first of all, um, the best places to find furniture to make over for your home or for profit if you're selling them, probably the best place that you will find furniture in the best condition would be estate sales. But I know estate sales can be expensive. So um, I, I like to go on the last day because then usually things are half off, 75% off. Um, but because estate sales are kind of, uh, the pieces have been taken care of. Um, I actually found this and a desk that I redid and already sold the desk, but, um, it was an older lady. Her family was kind of having a yard sale. I have my paint shirt on, <laughs> even though I'm not painting. I just, I always get so messy. So I did put my paint shirt on, but anyway, um, and the, they're just, this was in great condition. And so was the desk. I mean, a couple of these dings, it doesn't, I don't know if you guys can tell, it doesn't have, I don't think you can tell, it doesn't have the best um, finish. Like it's it's been through some things, but it's an old dresser, um, perfect for making over. You can see down here on the legs, there's a bunch of dings and um, so it's just make, it's a perfect candidate to, to make over, paint, flip, um, so yeah. So first of all, um, so thrift stores, restore, yard sales, like those are all great places to look as well. I find, I mean, I friends and family, they're the best for getting like free furniture. And, um, you know, if, they, if they've got a piece to get rid of, they're the best. Let them know, let your all your friends and family know that you are looking for pieces. Um, I will have, all the time, I just have people that know that I'm doing this and looking for pieces and... Uh, so they would just email me randomly, my friend or my so-and-so or somebody's got this dresser, do you want it? Um, and so that's, get the word out because I have gotten so many pieces free just from family and friends knowing that I'm doing this. So those are where you really should look for pieces. Um, and I, inside my course, Learn to Flip with Lindsay, I go over how to know what to pay for pieces, um, what's too much, uh, kind of there, there is a formula that I have put together that helps you decide what you should pay for pieces and all that kind of stuff. So that's definitely inside my course. Uh, I won't get into all of that now. Uh, I'll just kind of start this makeover and what I do. So when I first started flipping furniture, I picked up anything and, and anything I could get my hands on. I didn't care if it was real wood, not real wood. And that was me making a ton of mistakes. So learn from me, please, and don't do that. Um, there are many paint brands and things out there that say that their paint will work on, you know, not real pieces or... But I have found I've worked with many paint um, brands. I've, I've used many of them. And just when you're working with a piece that's not real wood, the entire process isn't as fun. The outcome doesn't last as long. Um, I would... I would 
I would encourage you to find real wood pieces. And so that is going to me to lead me into kind of, I'm just going to go over a few of the things. I do have a whole blog post about, and maybe we can leave some of these links in the um, comments after we get done with this live, but I do have a blog post on what to look for to know if a piece is real wood or not. Um, and so first of all, like chipping and missing veneer is a good sign that you've got an all, an all wood piece. Now, I say that some, this is wood veneer. Um, so there is like a, it's not plastic, but <laughs> there is kind of like a fake veneer that's not real wood. So, but this one is a real wood veneer. So that is a good sign that you're working with a real wood piece. The hardware alone. So from a distance, I can tell this old hardware, you can tell it kind of gives you the age of the piece. And so you definitely know this is going to be a real wood piece inside the drawers when you're looking at the drawers all three four side well like this and then inside should all be made out of wood um there should be no plastic like connectors no staples or like uh uh like um what do i want to say like plastic sides um it should all be real wood um, and then on the sides of the drawers this is this is like the number one, if you can open a drawer and you can see any of like the dovetail joints or the, um, oh my goodness, I'm not going to remember these joints. Um, but anyway, they're put together actually with the wood. They're not stapled. There's not a plastic piece um, holding them together. These are actually um, like dovetail drawers. That's, a, that's like a shirt. Just open the drawers in the piece and see. Also inside the piece, oops, let me set that up there. There are no like plastic runners. If there's plastic runners anywhere, you're probably not dealing with a real wood piece. Okay, um, another thing to look for are casters. I have my notes here, casters um, on the bottom. Some will come with them, some will be missing so you won't even know, but if there are some casters on the bottom, especially metal or wood casters, then you, you're probably dealing with a real wood piece. And then on the back, there should not be any cardboard on the backing of the piece. It should be a, a piece of wood, like part of the piece. And then lastly, um, and I have more of these tips and stuff inside that blog post, but also look for stamps. So stamps can be like an ink stamp, a paper stamp, usually on the back of a dresser. I have picked up pieces where there have been like a brass plate stamp here. Um, so that's another kind of stamp or inside the drawers, there have been stamps too. Um, it kind of tells you the manufacturer who made that. Um, hang on one second. <laughs> hang on, she is going to town on this little bone thing. I'm just gonna switch this up for her. Um, Hopefully she will be good. Um, okay, so now um, the first thing to do, so that's kind of some tips on where to find pieces, what to look for for real wood pieces. Um, cleaning a piece of furniture. So first of all, I'm not gonna start this now. I have done it in the top three drawers. Let me, um, definitely you want like a good shop vac go through all the drawers, go underneath, um, take the drawers out and kind of clean inside the actual dresser, like the shell of the dresser itself. Um, so, I mean, that's easy peasy. Whenever I find, can you, oh, you guys can see that, great. Whenever I find pieces that have drawer liners, I get so happy because usually underneath this, um, the drawers, the, the drawers have been kept you know, really, uh, the inside of the drawer is going to be in pristine condition. So I always take these old papers off. You could definitely, um, and this one, okay, you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, this one's coming off pretty easily. And usually it's contact paper. I have found, uh, where people have put just like newspapers and those kinds of things down. And those, um, I mean, obviously those are just laying down, but they're so old usually that they, 
almost fit the drawer perfectly and almost act as a, as a contact paper. So anyway, so I always take these out and be thankful for whoever put them down. <laughs> um, and then, you know, when you get this all out, obviously you want to use the vacuum. Uh, this drawer had it as well, uh, but I got it out. And there's something satisfying. I don't know if you guys, in a couple of our flip houses that we have done, uh, we have had wallpaper that we've had to remove. And anybody, if it's if it's if it's good and easy to take off, it's like it's like the most satisfying thing. <laughs> I could do it all day, as long as it's coming off easily and in big strips like this. Then it then it's a fun job. But here. I won't get the whole thing done right now. Okay, I thought that one was going to be a bigger piece. So anyway, so I always take those out. I always take that out. And you could put other stuff down, but usually what I do, and I guess I can get into that right now, is I will use um, one of my favorite products ever. I will use a salve. That sun is coming in. It's been a really gray day, so sorry about that. I will use a salve. It's the Wise Owl salve is unbelievable. And I will kind of show you. So this drawer, if you can see, Hilly, we don't need your help, please. Um, it does this. I never paint. I always get the question, do I paint inside drawers? I don't. I never paint inside or on the sides of drawers. You can do like a um, kind of like a stencil on the side of a drawer to do kind of a pop of color. Uh, I have done that before, but other than that, I, I kind of leave the drawers alone. So this one's not a great example of, Hilly, please, um, like a drawer. It's a great example of a drawer you could cover, but I'm just going to show you what this, what I usually do. So the salve, no, 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 we're not going to eat that. <laughs> the salve, oh, can you see that? is it's kind of like a wood conditioner i use this stuff in my car okay hilly hang on once i'm so sorry you guys okay sorry okay so i use this stuff inside my car it's just it's unbelievable they have so many scents it smells so good um if you are following my creative days on uh I can't remember if it was, I think I shared it on both Instagram or Facebook. I shared how this stuff alone transformed a table I found in an old uh, garage. But I will just use this. Can you, okay, you can see. You can see already what it's done to this wood and I've, I've just wiped it on once. Um, it just conditions the wood. So this is usually what I'm using inside drawers. I mean, <laughs> every time I use this stuff, I'm just amazed. So what I do is I will brush it on and I keep one brush for the salve and then I just keep it in my, um, in a, this little plastic bag. At the end, I will take a cloth and I will kind of wipe off all the excess and then I just slip it in the bag and it's always ready to go. But this stuff, you guys, if you are flipping furniture at all, get some of this and then, like I said, put it in your car. I like, so I clean my dash after I clean my dash and stuff, I put this on and the dust just doesn't, it's, it's just amazing stuff. You can use it on so many things, but this is what I will do inside drawers just to kind of condition that wood again and make it look good and kind of fresh again. So after, look at the difference. <laughs> so after I brush it on like that, I, I usually wait, just let it soak in a little bit and then I will take a cloth and I will um, just kind of wipe off the excess. Um, anything that has not soaked down into the wood. Um, so that's what I usually do inside drawers. And I won't, like I said, I won't do like all of that right now. So I was going to share a few different things inside this video. If you have any questions, um, let me know put it in the comments. If you're watching it on replay and you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comments. We will come back and answer them. Um, so now for the cleaning. So there's no rocket science to cleaning furniture before you paint it or before you make it over or before, depending on what you're doing. Uh, you basically, you know, like this piece to be completely honest, um, 
I mean, I'd probably be fine with a little bit of just like hot water. There are brands that have, like I love Dixie, oh my gosh. Sorry, I'll hold it up here. Dixie Bell and Wiesel are my two favorite brands and um, they, they do have furniture clean cleaners, but like this, it's in such good, like it was taken care of. Um, I, I don't need all that. I just, so I'm just using a thieves cleaner here. You can use like an all purpose cleaner, Dawn dish soap, you know, a little bit of soap in like a bucket of water is, you know, is all you need and then kind of rinse it off. The biggest thing, um, you just don't want water sitting on a piece of wood furniture. So you don't want to douse it with, um, because you're going to be painting this and um, you don't want to douse it with water or um, leave like the Dawn dish soap. The only thing about using that is you want to make sure that you get any of that residue off. And so <clears throat> you just want to not use a ton of dish soap because um, you will want to rinse that. Make sure that you get any of that residue off. But this, I mean, especially this dresser right now, the only, what I'm really doing, I'm dusting it really. Um, I'm just kind of getting it so there's nothing on here that uh, is going to show up, number one, in any primer or paint, um, or it's going to gunk up a sand sander. So if you're, this piece, most all pieces, you will want to scuff sand, and a scuff sand basically means you're just kind of running the sander over it. You're just kind of scuffing the surface. You don't, you, you're not like trying to get down to the bare wood. You're just trying to scuff the surface or the primer, the paint, depending on what you're using, um, will stick to it. <clears throat> uh, so this cleaning kind of helps with that too. So then your sandpaper and all that's not getting gunked up with dirt or dust. Um, it's just scuff sanding. Like that's all that's, um, on there. So that's basically all you're doing with the cleaning. Now, there have been many pieces where I have like pulled them out of a barn or out of a, like they have really, they're really dirty. So then I might grab like some of that cleaner that I just shared and really, you know, but if it's like this, you, you're just trying to dust it off. You're just trying to get it prepared for um, your sanding or if you're not sanding, um, most pieces though you are gonna stuff sand <clears throat> so that's the cleaning nothing serious just an old rag some paper towels you but the you do want to make sure can you guys see that yeah you can okay you want to get in those crevices because that's where the dust and the dirt you know between different levels or different that's where the dust and the dirt are set are gonna settle so grab q-tips grab you know, little brushes, toothbrushes, and make sure you get in there because the paint, the primer, whatever you're using, um, is not gonna stick to those areas, if that makes sense, if it's full of dirt and dust. So you definitely wanna get in there. Um, another little tip is when you're removing the, oh my gosh, when you are removing the hardware, you want to have, just something, some kind of container. Um, a Ziploc bag is fine too, but I just grabbed this because this was in my office. And I, I like to set it inside the drawer so then all the screws and all the hardware go in there. There have been times <laughs> where we have lost one or two um, handles or the screws or, uh, um, and it's, it's a nightmare. So. As soon as you take them off, make sure you have some kind of container to put them in and then keep them inside the piece. We have been working on like five pieces at a time and we didn't put them, this was way back. We've learned a lot over the years, but, um, and then we'd have the screws were all messed up and the, the knobs were messed up and we couldn't figure out what went with what. So if you just stick it inside the drawer, a Ziploc bag, whatever it is you're using, then it will not get lost. So at this point, you can remove these before you clean. This one is really crooked, isn't it? Um, remove them before you clean. Always keep hardware. So if this piece, let's say it was missing this handle, um, I would keep all of this because number one, it's beautiful, it's old. 
because there's so many times when I bring a piece home and I need, you know, two or three knobs or poles or whatever. And then I've got a nice stash going that I don't have to go out and buy new or try and find new. So even if it's missing hardware, still pick them up. Um, the pieces, if the pieces are still are in good condition and um, all wood and all of that, still pick them up. You can always get new hardware, but always keep the hardware that you're not using. If it's hardware that you like, there's been many pieces where they've added like new hardware that I knew I would never use again and I've gotten rid of that. But keep the hardware and then you will definitely use it on other pieces. <clears throat> so at this point, I would um, take the hardware off and I'm not gonna do all that here. This one, it was way crooked. And you should do this before you clean just because, I'll show you here. I'm gonna try and bring you guys closer just so you can kind of see. Can you see the amount of, I mean, it's furry dust. <laughs> that just kind of settles. I mean, it, it, they're old pieces, like I said. Um, so they just kind of settle there. And so definitely take off this hardware before you clean. Obviously before you sand too. I mean, you just, um, I'm just going to take off one more of these, I think. And, and hardware like this, yeah, like you guys, can you see that? Yes. Hardware like this, like you can lose the pole parts too. But if you have them all together, they're easy to slip back on if they're getting loose. They're easy to slip back on. But um, you definitely want to keep those so when I scuff sand, and I, I'm not going to be scuff sanding today because I have to put some veneer patching on, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But the scuff sanding will, you know, kind of clean up your piece a little bit too. So if you had some residue here that didn't come off with the cleaning, um, the scuff sanding, like kind of, I don't know if you guys can see that kind of black, um, you know, it's not coming off with the cleaning, the, the scuff sanding will just kind of smooth that out for you. So it's gonna all be um, smooth and ready for primer and paint. I hurt, okay. I hurt my right knee, I don't know how. And so like, I'm trying to be so careful <laughs> down here on it. Okay, so let me move you guys closer a little bit. Okay. So as you can see right here, I am missing veneer. I have tons of blog posts. I have three blog posts that shows how to fix veneer. There's different ways depending on the piece. This piece, this is the only, I say that and I haven't looked at the sides really well. I think this is the only area where this is, it's missing. So I do not need to remove veneer. I do not need to, um, you know, at all. I do not need to remove it. I just need to patch it. And so one, another favorite product is Dixie Bell's Mud. This comes in different colors. I am going to paint this dresser, so I'm fine with the white mud. Um, this is the easiest stuff. Uh, we have done many flip houses and um, one of my, like the drywall mud and I don't know what it is, but I'm just not great with this. And then when I discovered this, I'm like, I'm so excited because it's so easy to use. Matt even likes to use it. He'll grab this for some of our smaller projects. But so basically all you're going to do, this is just a plastic, you know, like paint scraper thing, spatula. <laughs> grab some on the bottom of your spatula and you want a good amount because you don't want to be wiping and dipping, wiping and dipping. You want to clean this off before you dip it again because you don't want any dust and debris or any like thing like that getting back in here because it'll just ruin the product. So basically, you do not have to be pretty with this. You do not have to be perfect with this. It's like, there we go. I'm going to leave it right like that. It's like putting butter on something. Um, and make sure you always close this if you're not using it because it will dry up fast. So if you can see here, I just, you cannot, I did not want to see any of that indent at all. So I covered it. it, this isn't perfect, it doesn't look perfect, but we're gonna leave it alone and we're gonna let it fully dry. Do not touch it 
until it's fully dry. Um, and then all this excess, I'm just gonna wipe off here on this old rag here. Do not put that back in the container, just again, because you don't wanna gunk up your container and then have to throw out a whole thing of, of, of product. So basically, like I said, the edges here aren't perfect, but I cannot see that indent where the, the veneer is gone anymore. So once this dries, again, I'm just, I would just take just a piece of sandpaper, not like an orbital sander or anything tough, and I would just go over this until it's all smooth and it's all one level, and then it's ready for primer and paint. So that will take, it might be ready this afternoon, I've had, you know, it just it kind of depends on how much you need to cover. Um, you know, was it a huge divot? Um, you know, that your dry time will just depend. But you, you want that completely dry uh, before you touch it or sand it. With that being said, so let's say you come over here and sand this and you don't like the way it sanded or kind of it indented again or no problem. Just put more of this on there and just do the process all over again. So it's, it's easy, it's so nice to work with. So this is another product that I would definitely say if you're flipping furniture to have on hand. Okay, let me see, I'm on a hardware. Okay, I think, I think that's everything I kind of wanted to talk about today. Since I had this, I can't, I'm, I'm not gonna um, pre or scuff sand it or anything because I'll do that kind of with with the, when I do the scuff sanding, I will do this. If you are just new to this, I would definitely don't use um, an electric sander or like I have the um, serve prep sander that I absolutely love. If you're just starting out, just use just a piece of sandpaper in your hand. You have a lot more control over that. You know, you know, um, you can kind of see easier. So definitely don't use an orbital sander or an electric sander right off the bat if you're if you're new to doing this because it they can kind of go quick. The surf prep sander is a lot better than like an orbital sander. I feel like it's more um it's I'm sorry, she's it's it's just more gentle. Sometimes an, I love an orbital sander though, sander though too. So I use them both for different reasons, but sometimes an orbital sander will kind of go too quick or it's just too harsh. Um, so definitely use a hand sander, especially on this, you know, like a delicate area like this that you just need to get smooth and level. Okay, I am going to finish cleaning this piece and take off the rest of the hardware, wait for this to dry. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know. Um, down here, so you guys can see this little, where this is kind of, it just looks like it's been, you know, like nobody's chewed it. It's not like a dog has chewed it, but speaking of, um, but it's just been dinged, you know, over years. So my, the surf prep sander will kind of smooth that out really well. So when I scuff sand it, I will come down here and get this really, um, I was just thinking it would be really cool to do these, uh, to stain these, but I don't think I'll be able to get that all the way down to stain these and then have this all painted. Um, hmm. I'm just thinking as I sit here, so I will scuff, some people will ask, how will you get this? So this scuff sand, it, I will just use a sander to kind of smooth these areas out. Definitely. Um, but the, this would be a perfect, um, dresser to do these where they're just wood and then the rest of it's painted, but we will see. I, I sometimes don't know. Oh, I do want to share something else. Oh, I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it out here. I thought I had it with me. I guess I didn't. Um, Dixie Bell has a new kind of paint line. It's called Silk. And it is um, the primer, the paint, and the top coat all in one. And so literally, I have done a piece in it. And it's all, that's all you have to do. I have um, the contact that I have with Dixie Bell Paint. I reached out to them and I said, now I see people putting a top coat on top of this Silk line paint. And she said, I don't know why people are doing that. It's child resistant, scratch resistant. Like it's, you're not supposed to have to put an extra top coat on it. So it's kind of amazing. And I, I say that because anybody that's just starting out, I would recommend kind of using a product like that. So it's not so overwhelming with having to do a primer, having to do paint, and then having to do a separate top coat. If you can find a, 
um, a product that has all three in one. And when I first started, there was no such thing. So this, that would be, that would have been a game changer back in the day. Um, and I, I have a link for that if that's something you're interested in, but, and I thought I grabbed a can of it with me, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't. So, um, it's just so nice to have it all done in one kind of one, one, uh, application. And then you don't have to do the three separate steps. So no. Okay. So I'm going to continue cleaning this. Um, there's, I know there's not that many people here live. Do you have any questions? Any of the, those of you that are here now? We will leave some links in the comments for some of the things I talked about. Um, if you think of any questions, if there's something else you would like to see, if there's something else you would like me to go more and, you know, like you would just want to see more of Hilly, no, um, let me know. But your feedback tells me what, what more you want to see. And I have not done really any lives here inside the frugal group. So we're trying to, to, to figure out what you guys want to see and what I should be posting more of in here. Um, so definitely let me know in the comments as well, but. But yeah, I I think that's it for today. Um, that's as far as I can go. I will just finish cleaning it. I do see another little area here um, that it, it's kind of missing veneer uh, that I can cover up too as well. But, um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for being here. If you're watching it on replay, let us know that you were here. Just put in the comments, hashtag replay. Then we know that you guys were here. And I hope you guys have an amazing, what is today? Tuesday. And um, I will catch you guys again soon.